Today is Declan's birthday. It's the 5th of April and he is 14. A very significant age, I think. Sort of halfway through to becoming a, an adult. And a very special day for us and the family because it's his birthday anyway. So of course we're hoping that he's watching this and that he is or hearing it somewhere or somehow knowing that we're thinking very much of him today on his birthday, that he has lots of lovely presents at home to tempt him with if he wants to come and, and get them. Um, there'll be no questions asked, not. And um, if he just wants to come home and, or just ring us, that would be fantastic. Uh, so how will you be, you know, what was it like waking up this morning? Was there that, still that hope it's his birthday today, he's going to walk in that door? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So. Is it now more than ever that you were thinking that today, you know, would be the day if he was, you know, ever going to walk in? Was today the day? I think I was trying to put my, I'm trying to put myself into the head of a, a 13, 14 year old, and I'm, I know that teenagers live in the moment and are very self-centered. That's all part of their development. That's normal and natural. And and I'm thinking, well, if I was that age and I knew I had some expensive presents waiting for me that I really wanted, I might just overcome any concern I might have about coming home and getting into trouble. Um, and because everyone's always nice to you on your birthday and that sort of thing. So yeah, I suppose that's what I was thinking. This whole time must have been incredibly hard for you. Is today, you know, particularly hard? It's particularly hard for my daughter, his sister. Um, she's really feeling it hard today. Um, that's why she's not here. Um, and But for me, i found the process has, has just toughened me up. Um, I've been through such a range of emotions in the last nearly four weeks that I just have to um, say, well, I'm not going to go there because otherwise I'll fall in a heap, so I just have to toughen up and, and do the job and get on with it. Have um, school friends come to you at all saying that they'll be doing anything special for his birthday in, in sort of honour of him? Not that I know of, but I've tried to keep them at a distance. Um, but just just because they're they're kids and they're very emotional, and um, I don't need the extra emotion to just to be able to keep doing my job, uh, which is what I have to do to find them. Mm. Someone must know something. Um, what's your message to people out there to, to come forward? I'm pretty certain that that Deck is not on his own that he's got somebody with him and whoever they are they probably don't really mean any harm they're just not thinking um, or they're in the, in the moment as well they're just having a good time or whatever's going on and I just like them to just stop for a minute and think about the cost to everybody else not just his immediate family but all his friends everybody who knows him even people who don't know him at all you know this is really heart-wrenching for the uh, everyone in Cairns and, and even in greater area than that why are you so certain, you know, that he, that someone is helping him? What makes you so certain? Um, he wouldn't be able to survive. He hasn't got any money, or he's got, had very little money, but we're really far along now, so that would have been long gone. And even if he was sort of stealing or breaking in to support himself, I don't think he would be able to survive. He doesn't, he's not a, a streetwise kid. He's never done this before. Um, I've said all this before, but I don't think he would really be able to survive too well without help and certainly not stay hidden this long um, and I'm pretty sure that if he was in a situation where he was unhappy or he didn't like it he'd just say stuff this and come home so he must be in a situation where it's conducive to having a good time where he's enjoying himself and your main message is to him no questions asked just come home yeah just come home yeah we miss you come home and happy birthday what's it been like in the family home without him today well, I've actually been at work today, so I haven't. And um, I was out doing a media interview first thing this morning at the crack of dawn, so I haven't had that experience yet. When I get home, then I'll then I'll, I'll be able to answer that question because at the moment, yeah, it's not. I'm too busy. I haven't had that quiet moment to really think about it. What sort of support are you getting? I mean, particularly on a day like this. Well, my family, fantastic. My partner Peter and Grace, my daughter, fantastic. Everybody at work is just fantastic. And I must say the police have been great too, and I'm getting lots of support from friends. And yeah, I couldn't couldn't um, have more support really. And you're still working. It sounds like you're keeping yourself busy. So then, is that 
for obviously is that a particular reason why? Why I'm working? Yeah. Um, well, I, th I think there's a limit to how much time you can actually not work. You know, your life goes on, you still have to be able to pay your bills. But it's actually quite grounding for me. It's the first couple of weeks, there was just no normal. Um, and I wasn't really working the first couple of weeks. And being back at work, now there is a hint, of, a tinge of normal. But, and, and that's really good. That's helpful. Have you been in touch at all with the Morecambe um, parents at all, with Daniel Morecambe's parents? And if so, have they been helpful? I haven't been in touch with them. I think they've got a lot on their plate at the moment. And certainly that's been suggested to me. And that might happen at, down the track, I don't know don't have any plans to do so at the moment but I think they've got their own issues at the moment and their own grief so I don't want to intrude on that. I had no idea it would go on this long no. I'm um, just like everybody else I thought he'd turn up after a couple of days and and I just have been naughty and come home again but yeah. What sort of things that go through your mind? The funny thing is that the longer it's gone on, the more sure I've become that he's having an adventure, um, that he's doing something which um, is, he's being true to himself, this is what he really wants to do. He's only a kid though, he's only, he thinks he's probably older than he is, you know, this is the sort of thing you might set off to do when you're 18 or something, when you've left school, right, I'm going off to travel, I'm going off to have an adventure, and he can't wait, and I think that's what he's done, I think he's just gone hey, this is a really good opportunity, I'm, I'm going to go off and find myself and, and do my thing. And I know my parents won't let me, because he's right, we wouldn't have. So he's just gone and done it. Is you there a reason, though, that you feel that way? Is, it, like, is that because of his friends that you've spoken to that make you feel like that? Or? No, it's knowing him and knowing he's my son. So did he, did he always seem like he wanted to, you know, set out and do something? Is that, is that the type of person that he was, that he wanted to go off on an adventure? He always, um, he was always adventure focused from yeah from a young age. He always had a very inquisitive, inquiring mind. Always wanted to know everything about everything. He's always, um, I've said this many times, but he's always read adventure books. He loves fantasy games where you go off and conquer things and fight and um, and he quite often he has he um, has great imagination and he's um, talked a lot about where he'd like to go and what he'd like to do with his life and which is fairly unusual for that age. He doesn't want to, He hasn't been talking about career prospects, but or what he'd like to do his career. But these are the experiences he'd like to have. So I'm just thinking that that's what's going on in his head. And what regions of Australia are of appeal to Declan? Do you think that he would venture to? Well, his um, fantasies have always been about much further away places, you know, like overseas or the moon or you know outer space or something. But um, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, a big city, I think, would have appeal. Um, he's been to Sydney. Um, he hasn't been to Melbourne since he was a baby, so he wouldn't really remember that. Otherwise, I don't really know. From uh, interaction with his friends, have you got any sort of better idea of the frame of mind he was at before he went missing? I haven't had any interaction with his friends. Okay. Yeah. But the police have been doing that. What was it like the last time you, you spoke with him? What, what was his... Then. Same as normal, absolutely the same as normal. Um, I dropped him off at school um, because he asked for a lift that day because he was running late um, and he was going to miss the school bus. So I, that gives him an extra few minutes to wake up. So I took him to school and I gave him a job to do, which was please go and take this to the office. And he was when, when he got out of the car, I drove him right to the office. When he got out of the car, he took off in the opposite direction, which is very typical of Declan because he's already his head was somewhere else. So I leant out the window and said, office, oi, office. And he went, oh, and he went off to the office. And that was just very typical of Declan. And that's just a normal day of him with his head somewhere else completely and not, not in practical things. Any comments? Do you want any comments yeah. from me? Obviously it's a sombre day for the family because it is Declan's 14th birthday but tomorrow is four weeks since he has gone missing and um, I think the police would like as um, Ruth is hopeful that Declan will walk into that door and you know say hello to us and I'm here for my birthday but obviously um, from a policing perspective and as police and investigators we do have some serious concerns and graves con grave concerns for his safety. Uh, we've um, 
conducted extensive investigations to date. Uh, we've had reported sightings, but none of those have been confirmed or verified. So yes, we do have some concerns. Our investigations will continue along. We are piecing together every minute of his day for seven days leading into when he went missing to give us some further insight as to what he might be thinking, who he might have been speaking to. Those investigations are continuing as are our other investigations. Um, like I said, uh, like Ruth, I think we would all like to see Declan just turn up and say, Mum, I'm home, you know, I've been away and on my adventure and I'm back. But um, as police and um, as um, investigators, we certainly do have those concerns and our investigations will continue. How many people, um, how many sightings, sorry, to date now have well, we've had um, 150 Crime Stopper reports. They're not all sightings, as well as that we've had other people come forward to various police stations. So we're following up on all of those. But like I said, none of those have been confirmed or supported by any other evidence to date. So that, that's where our concerns lie. Uh, we investigate a number of scenarios. There are about four or five scenarios that we're looking at, and we will continue along that. And I understand uh, extra police have been flown up from Brisbane? Yes, we are constantly been um, uh, involving other detectives from Crime Operations Command. They've been excellent support. Um, they assist us with our, um, not only investigations, but running the major incident room, conducting investigations, intelligent, intelligent checks. They've been an excellent support to this investigation. Are you concerned that Declan may think this thing has become really big? Um, no, because I think we constantly reiterate that we're more concerned about your safety and where you are and your parents just want you back. Yes, it is big and it really needs to be big because the child's, you know, gone missing. And we want it to be out in the public eye and in the media so people can talk about it, people know who he is and if they do see him, they need to contact us. But I think with that though, um, we do make the comments in the media that yes, if you are Declan, uh, yeah, if you're out there, come home and, you know, we'll deal with that later. We just want to know that you're safe. This must be, you know, it's obviously an emotional day for the family. Is it the same for police as they're working around the block? And yeah, I think it is because we've got to know the family and Ruth and Grace especially, uh, uh, you know, very well through this process. And I know Grace um, is not handling today or any other day very well as you'd expect of a family member. So for police that become heavily involved in these matters, yeah, we're very connected and very affected by, very, very similarly to the family. So what now? I mean, it seems like authorities have really looked at every option. Are they just going back to the start and going through it again, or what? We will constantly process? go through it again, um, even though it might be four weeks' time. We will think, hang on a minute, we need to go back and do this again, just to be it, it comprehensive in everything we do. But we have constantly got information coming in. So as well as retracking our steps, um, being comprehensive in that regard, we follow up new leads constantly. Any new leads? Unfortunately, all the leads and all the information that has come in hasn't taken us any further than what we were on that first day. And like I said, we have um, investigated this extensively and will continue to do so. Uh, but we're at a loss and um, it, we do ask, I can tell you, people of Machen speak to be, be very patient with us because we are going back to some people three, four, five times and we need to, need to and that will continue. Uh, but we will continue at this until we have an answer. Did the woman in the cat incident ever come up? Can uh, come forward? Uh, I don't know if we we're still looking at that uh, as to that option. But uh, that was just that's just one of our many inquiries. Anything else that you'd like to add? All I can add is um, today is, I suppose, a special day for the family. And Declan, if you're out there, come home. But really, uh, we need to um, keep highlighting um, the fact that he is missing. We need to get the, his pictures out there. And I think there's some footage, um, video footage of him that we will release as well. Uh, we need to, uh, people to keep talking about this. I'm of the view that someone does know something, unless there was some misadventure involved. But we need the public to keep coming forward with the information that they have. Thank you. Thank you Thanks very much. Okay. <coughs> um, so what time did you have to wrap this morning? <laughs> Sunrise, probably six o'clock.